now. Trent Pax, welcome back to the broadcast, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, Zyori. Don't forget at Trent Pax on Twitter. <laughs> Might as well. That's true. You can see our Twitter handles right below. That's, that's um, what it's there for. And of course, shout out to HyperX making oh, this event mm. possible, hooking us up with some of the hardware, running this very tournament, this beautiful... I, I am into this mouse. This has become my new primary. There you go. Thank I, you, uh, I have replaced it. I've got a graveyard of mice next to me, and HyperX stands strong amongst the herd. Well done, HyperX. Well done. Well done, Virtus Pro on a game one victory yes that is correct uh some similar bands here except vp will now take out the shadow demon as viking gg have first pick and uh certainly shows that virtus pro prioritized the shadow demon a lot if they have second pick they're banning it if they have first pick they're gonna try to let it through it does a lot man it just counters so many heroes and that's the been their go-to philosophy for like this entire page of bands it looks like <laughs> yeah <laughs> get shadow demon if first pick and what's also cool about winning that game is profit was kind of a non-factor i don't think he was banned even just ignored nope. so now vp have shown off uh, a certain strat and can certainly go back to the tried and true no one profit if it makes it through uh, the mars will not be available though i think that is an astute ban from viking gg lichen also going to get taken out now by virtus pro I got to target the other Rezo hero that's uh, looked all right too in the, the Pango. So I guess they also yeah. have flexibility that could be for Zayats too. So it's a solid band that way. But uh, the Rezo Centaur, of course, still a big one to watch for. And with Oracle gone, we have Coddle. We have Phoenix still in. That's probably going to be the first pick, I feel. Two solid openers. Unless they want the profit themselves, no. They want the Phoenix. They want to get some Sunray heals, potentially some egg saves. A little team fight synergy. I feel like we've only seen Phoenix Mars. I actually don't know what you open alongside the Phoenix now. <laughs> uh, they did Axe last time they picked it, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. That was into okay. a uh, the Alliance strat, very similar to what Virtus Pro like with the Nature's Prophet. So who knows? That could even happen. The last time we saw Virtus Pro was versus Liquid when they opened with the Phoenix, and Virtus Pro picked that Beastmaster and the uh, Crystal Maiden, which was kind of fun. But uh, instead, we're going to get some Bloodlust action from the Ogre and the Nature's Prophet. Ooh. So will we see the Axe? Do Viking GG actually believe in this combo? Or because they used it to beat Alliance. No, they took nope. the Beastmaster. I like this a little better. I've heard mostly negative things about Axe. And yes, mostly positive things about Beastmaster. So there you go. But, you know, you win games with heroes versus good teams, and that, that gives me some attention. You are not wrong, good sir. Now, what do you do against this no one profit? If you're Viking GG, you, you obviously know they've been playing it a lot. You know what they can do with it. You have chosen to let it through. What's the solution? Uh, well, they're probably going to ban DK. Otherwise, I would pick DK to try and get a good matchup that no matter what feels good. But I think that'll be the Virtus right. Pro ban here. That's a start. Are there any other heroes that fill that role similar to the DK that can just kind of handle the pressure? I think Monkey, similarly, because even though he's not as good in the lane uh, compared comparatively, he's still like in the mid-game and everything else. He just fits really well versus the Nature's Prophet. Ooh, they banned the Timber Jeez, now. That could have been a good one for them, too, but just a uh, classic hero versus the Beastmaster and also a strength hero in the, the Phoenix. So, All right, VP. Is it the DK ban? Are they going to leave DK in and take it themselves? VP do have this uh, first third pick. Uh, Yeah, I, I don't mind that, actually. It's not a bad Probably solution. For Probably for Rezo. I think Centaur is also still pretty uh, clutch versus Phoenix in a lot of ways because like you're trying to dictate where the fight takes place and Centaur lets you choose. You could actually DK and Centaur. I don't. I, I, I LTW could go safe lane with the Dragon. Yeah, but then you have your tenth pick that you're still holding out on. So I mean, that'll have to happen. Maybe eventually. We'll see how the rest of the draft progresses. Sure. Thinking about this here. Uh, Death Prophet is still in. That's another hero that you might want to consider because they already have the Beastmaster and just a like, fast-paced hero. But it will just be the DK. I guess because he's also fast-paced. But 
it's just uh, too good at protecting their nature's profit, I think. Marana. All right. Our third Marana pickup that we've gotten to see in our game. She's picking up steam. So good hero versus Phoenix with the leap. Uh, kind of good versus Beastmaster, even a support role, because you can just take you care of the boards right creeps. away in the yep, laning stage. Exactly. Has set up in some ways with the Sprout. We've seen that work before where people are too greedy to keep a Quelling Blade. And the Ogre to some degree. Yep. Not even terrible. just the slow from Ignite. Could also be a core. You have 10th pick. So if it looks good, you just do that in the end. Sure. Pretty I mean, flexible. it could be a bait with no one uh, playing the Nature's Prophet so much. You never know. They could switch it around. A lot of flexibility across these heroes. Is Rubik in? He is. Rubik is in. Hmm. That looks okay. I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate Rubik. I don't think I ever hate Rubik. Grimstroke's still in though. Grimstroke seems kind of tempting too. Versus Nature's that Prophet, you have the Stroke better. of Fate versus all the Treants. You have the Soulbind to leash down the Marana, as well as combo with the yep. Beastmaster Roar. I'm pretty in on Grimstroke. The only, yeah. I was gonna say nice the only downside balance. they don't have a great Inkswell partner now, but I mean that's obviously they have two picks left, so plenty of time to to do that. Yeah, sure. I think it's a nice counterbalance to the Phoenix, too. It just counters so a many nice heroes, too, like stun. all game, you know? It's just yeah. nice. In terms of scaling supports, Grimstroke is up there for sure. Well, especially because it works with items. If it didn't work with items, it wouldn't be nearly as sick. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, sci late game Scythe on Grimstroke is pretty much good across the board. Really chewing through the reserve time, and they will select the Grimstroke. Okay. Well, there you go. For Very all nice. the reasons just mentioned. Yeah. All right. So we've seen this a lot. What counters Grimstroke? Anything? Not really. <laughs> it's, I mean, theoretically dispel, but even when you dispel the Inkswell, it still pops. I don't know why that's a thing. Yeah, he's hard to actually counter. It's sort of a play style thing. Like, I guess, like Juggernaut or Life Stealer or somebody like that that is fine against stuns. I think like backline breakers tend to counter Grimstroke a little bit, like clockwork and stuff, but they're kind of hard to work in. Uh, Weaver, I guess, would be another example. Someone who just wants mm -hmm. to get in his face and mess with him. Like force a bad soul bind is pretty much your best bet. Uh, Marana can do that sort of in the support role, so that might just lean her even closer to support now because of that. That's a fair point. She is good at getting in the back line. And I guess if she's a core, Marana potentially is good against Phoenix. Right, the attack speed on leap. You I mean, jump it's, in. It's, she's fine as a support for the same reasons, because it's yeah, true. I guess I imagine her being a little more under leveled, so maybe yeah, harder to you do have that. Talent. You're, yeah, yeah. If you're a core Marana, you can do it with confidence. You know, people are afraid of you. If you're a support, they Is might be able to pull in? you away from the egg. Oh, they take the the Luna. Why would they take Luna instead of Troll? Well, I imagine because of the aura. Well, that's <laughs> what I would also imagine. But Troll is good hero. Uh oh. The Brood Mother we've talked so much about. She's been banned in several games. Viking GG will grab it fourth pick. Now, is it good here, though? I think of Marana and Luna as heroes that have some tools in terms of killing the spiders, right? Because there's stars just hit all of them. Bouncy glaives are jumping around, killing them. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little curious. I mean, they still have the pick left, too, right? That's kind of the big thing in terms of like the lane matchup. So they can at least get something that's going to do well. Yeah, that's what I'm curious here. They'll probably ban nervous. Kunkka, and then VP could do uh, No One Tiny, maybe? That would be pretty hype. Ooh, that would be hype, and pretty cool. The Luna pick is interesting, though. I, I wonder what the real... Maybe their last pick will tie it all together. VP do have 10th pick here, so they can be a little reactionary. Pretty tense moment. You know, the Luna into the Grimstroke, too. Ooh. Dark portrait later, guys. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, seriously. I mean, with Prophet and Luna, though, your ability to push and close out a game is pretty good. They've yeah, I think that's uh, that would be why Luna over like when I asked the question, why would you pick Luna over Troll? The whole idea is just like, like what are the the good reasons for? It? Like, good reasons I can think of is that like she doesn't have to invest in like the Battle Fury to necessarily go for this like hard farming build. So like you don't have to choose mm -hmm. too early how the game's going. If that makes sense? Like, yeah, yeah. You can kind She's of flexible. start playing with your team, and then if things are going poorly, like at least you can still jungle. And yeah, as expected, they ban Kunkka. Uh, 
so that that's nice. And then there is just like the faster gameplay. So looking at a safe laner here. I mean, they could pick troll. Uh, they what's a position one that's good with Grimstroke? I mean, PL is also still in. Is that too greedy? I think so. I don't know. It's not bad. You have Doppelganger versus Nature's Prophet. You have single target of the Ogre and the Marana because, like, she's probably not going to get that much damage at the Starfall unless she goes. I guess the Nature's Prophet can also just go straight Mjolnir too, but that still didn't work out earlier. They've actually picked PA oh. before without. Uh... Oh, Bloodseeker! I was thinking there's got to be some crazy pick here that does work very well with Grimstroke. He's very fast, yes. so it's hard to get away from him. So yeah. the Inks well. It's almost guaranteed to hit. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, the only one I can think of was like the daggers because they've done that combo before. But uh, the rupture is nice. That's pretty good. Yeah, two ruptures, the soul bind. That's not bad. All right, so is tiny still viable, or are we going somewhere else? No one tide hunter. Then you have the kraken shell versus beastmaster. You know, you could get away with the melee mid here, tide mid. Oh, that sounds crazy, but it actually looks pretty good. I mean, it's just the brood heroes, right? It's like kunkka, tiny, uh. Tide. I'm trying to remember I mean, what they, else people even pick now. They could use a Tide esque hero to kind of tie things together. You've got some good single target stuns, but some sort of big team fight. I don't want to go too out nice. there with like an axe or something. All right, I'll take right, the they, TA. TA. Yeah, that's maybe a little more stable. Someone else that synergizes well with their push. They will be able to cripple structures now if they win team fights. Uh, obviously means Roche options for VP. TA with battle, uh, Bloodlust from the Ogre is also pretty scary. Luna with Bloodlust is really scary. Wow. A wild game, too. A cool draft from Viking GG. Now, do you like it here, bud? Are you confident? If you were a betting man, would you put your toonies on this Broodmother Bloodseeker If, if they were draft? completely even teams, I would be pretty tempted to go for Viking GG. But with the, the knowledge of who is playing on each team, I think I still favor Virtus Pro. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. I feel like after seeing game one, I, I just didn't see enough evidence that the Beastmaster looks good in their hands. I feel like they weren't even abusing the Hawks at all. I didn't have these moments where the Hawks saw something and I went, ah, nice, good. There was like the one good forward vision thing that happened was just from an Observer Ward randomly. I'm not sure why it looked that way that game, but to me, the Hawks didn't even feel like they had a huge impact. And I don't think that's yeah, a hero issue. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I, I was trying to fathom a counter argument there, and uh, nothing came to me. Uh, <laughs> was... All right. Well, certainly something fast for VP. I, I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with their draft. These, this egg is never going to get off. <laughs> they have no AoE stun around to cover the egg, and we have four range heroes and bloodlust. Like, this egg is screwed. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to fathom good. a way to say, like, what's the best case no. scenario? Like, you tank blood right, and everyone, the egg's still going to die. Yeah, they don't have any. They needed, like, a, a coddle or, or someone that can try to protect the egg. You know what else it's... is kind of annoying, too, is that, like, Sunray doesn't even feel that good this game because your cores are so, like, at like mobile agi heroes like they're not even gonna get a big percent bonus they're not gonna be stationary because you don't really have a bunch of lockdown oh, so the fights are gonna be super like skitter scattered thanks to your brood mother oh we got an hey, update pal. from our uh, remote stats man here it says fairly sure neither luna or marana do anything to brood okay well, yes that's we'll that is correct <laughs> that's why they picked See? templar assassin that's why we pay this man the big bucks <laughs> I like this. We should have hired remote stats people a long time ago just to feed us some lines. Like, hey, bro, here's here's a cool little tidbit. The thing about, like, Marana, for example, like, you can't rely on the Star Storm because you, you need these physical options. That's why it's Tidehunter and Kunkka and uh, Tiny because they have early cleave options and early physical base spread. And same thing with Templar Assassin, right? That's how you're going to deal so. with the spiders because they have all that magic resistance. Ooh. And with Brood, she's, she starts so strong, it's all about trying to slow down the momentum early, right? So that's like the Tide, the Kunkka, they're ready to start combating at level one with all their AoE. I mean, I just think Kunkka, Kunkka by far is the best counter, I think, these days. Just like, not only because like the way the lane works, but then even just in the mid game, it's just, that's why you always see the Brood pick ninth into the Kunkka ban every single time. All righty. 
Again, elimination. Viking GG absolutely need the W here. They are uh, all in, so to speak, begins. on this Broodmother and Bloodseeker combo. Now, I do think Bloodseeker Grimstroke is actually a really good duo. Bloodseeker, we've seen mostly to counter, like, Slark. That's the big counter pick I always think of. Yep. But when enabled with a, a Grimstroke, it certainly gives him some options. Yeah, that's pretty cool. They have a lot of synergies together uh, between the uh, the double rupture as well as he's just a great ink swell target because of his whole kit and just running at people. And uh, again, the, the, the reason we knew the Grimstroke was coming with that counterpick to the uh, Nature's Prophet too, because sometimes you see these Grimstrokes get like crazy farmed up because they're just stroking the waves constantly. And then if he, like, let's say that this game kind of stalls out a little and he gets the Aghanims and they try and start sieging the high ground with this Luna and then there's, there's a Dark Portrait Luna, that's going to be pretty spicy. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, well Down bottom. Little damage being traded. BP starting in a safe lane try. Maybe hunting for a potential first blood, but you got a hawk here scouting things out. Phoenix just with fire spirits right now. Won't be able to finish him off. A pretty happy Luna right now, though. He supports doing a good job making space. Aramis taking a lot of damage. Another set of fire spirits. Need a few more. There is an arrow on Zayats, but no angle. Yeah, he just holds it there. <laughs> Toby just tanks it. But now it's a little scary. Uh, the Bloodseeker, he's going to start getting some charges. Yeah, okay, Rezo is safely not, under not his tower, enough. though. Yeah. Denied. Look at this This one lone tree up here blocking the small camp, too. <laughs> That's so annoying. And it's going to have just enough trees. time to grab the wave. He can camp miles. and block the camp again. If, oh, he's actually not even going to try. He's just going to block it instead. He's going to block it. I guess yeah, he doesn't have bottom. to, because this wave is just going to make it the whole way. More damage being exchanged. Not able to find the kills. I I these are my favorite treant cosmetic. Yeah, me too. I like them as well. Oh. The little conifers. Yeah. Little pine trees with legs. Rezo? There it is, the ink swell after the blood right. There you go, that's the combo in action. Chad, get the first blood on Rezo. That's very and impressive that we were able to, yeah. <laughs> I was actually just about asking who you thought was going to die first, and I was going to guess Phoenix, so it's a good thing that didn't happen, because I would have been wrong. So there you go. But, uh, I normally kill, wouldn't say Rezo, but against this matchup, yeah. No boots yet. You know, it's a time when you can get caught on the profit if you're like cause look at it, it's stroke into blood right. So they have this setup that is pretty easy to land. Well, it's pretty painful when you're dying under tower like that. That was also the window where he needed the treant summon to uh block the camp again and he died during it. So the camp does spawn this time. He is gonna stop the stack though. Oh that little tree. Oh. <laughs> I mean it disrupted enough anyway, but <laughs> nice kill. These are these are hero Radiant trees. Structure. Fortified. How's this mid lane going? It looks like TA is having an okay time. Of course, that KDA or uh, CS chart inflated from the Spiderling, so we'll have to take a look at net worth. And she's way ahead 1800 on TA, 1100 on the Brood. So even with the Spiders, this is domination from no one. Yeah, no one. Uh, he's, he's catching the Spiders on the way out. Like, that's the first time I've seen Boom get them out of there when he tries to make this rotation part, right? Like, that's the whole idea of the Brood in these matchups versus the physical cleave is you just gotta get the Spiders up here and let the Spiders go do their thing. Oh! Down bottom, Aramis. He sidesteps an arrow, but BP have stayed committed to this try lane A little bit atypical for most of the matches we've seen. Usually it's a starter, and then they go back to the 2-1-2. And maybe that's why they're able to pressure Rezo so much. TP out, he'll make it. Dyer's Way more aggressive this game, attack. though, than what we saw in the first matchup Dyer's of this series. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened with the Inkswell there. I guess he just didn't think he would go for it that fast on the TP. Yeah, I was, I was looking bottom. It's the same cat. It's the same buff time. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the last three seconds, same as a TP. So as long as you get it off first, obviously, you can't react. Dyer's middle tower. Both safe laners doing pretty well, but the uh, solo Nature's Prophet is actually doing better in the 2v1, and the Beastmaster is in the 2v3. Get those spiders out of there. Alright, back to Fireman. This is a nice little uh, cluster that he's got here. 
That's with the wave. No one with the illusion rune. Great rune to have right now. Because he's able to just prop the wave like this and clear it instantly. So now uh, he wants to try and burn this rainy wave under the tower as fast as he can. Mm. That forces back boom before... Oh, he actually did finish the camp in time. So there you go. Oh, oh side blades. Oh, that was a, that was a big one. That was a pinata. Oh, man. I wonder, like... If this no matchup, I wonder right if you now. need like a, a web there or something, you know? Like, should that be yeah. part of the strat so that you don't just get half of them killed on the way by? I mean, it, it's a thought. So if that keeps happening, I think no one is feeling pretty good. Absolutely not. It's, it's not just that he's killing these spiders and slowing down the brood a bit, but his farm is also quite nice. This is a very easy mid lane for him right now. I wonder who buys Halberd on the side of Viking GG. Kinda want to say Beastmaster. Weird as that is. You know, yeah, I, mean, I guess he could go like uh, either Necro or Helm into it. Probably Necro this game because they don't have anyone else going to buy it. And uh, it's oh, quality item. Rezo with the TP. Dyer's middle tower so he just uh, asked before the ink spell got put on. As long as he cast the TP first, he should be good. He got problems. They're, they're losing this mid tower here. I don't know if they want to like rotate someone else in here and try and set something up. It looks like Zyath is almost ready for that. He's gonna get a ward. Bottom. Oh. Toby in some trouble. Rezo now. He's here. It's a three on two again. And this Beastmaster should be put down. No stick or mango on Luna. But she gets off a glaive and has plenty of damage. Okay. Three one. Tier one tower down mid. No one leading the pack in net worth. I mean, zero problem this game so far for him. I, I haven't even seen him, like, use tangos. Like, I think he used his first round of regen, and that was it. Zayet does get the kill on Aramis. Dives under tower. That was pretty deep. He was in a tier two. Does die first, so not really favorable, but... Distraction. They've got a siege creep, so, hey, it's space. But this is the cool thing about the Prophet, because you can actually leave him solo. He doesn't have to win the top lane, he just has to not feed. He TPs out against the Bloodseeker, and now he's just going to help you push bottom. Do they have any punish for this? Bloodseeker's pressuring that top tower, but look Go at that. Prophet way. has two TPs. He just heads back up, and, and Marana the, kills the Siege Creep. Yeah, the typical Dyer's arrow catapult. Is under Perfect. TP are making all the moves right now, man. It's only a 1k net worth lead, but this feels real rough for Viking. They just need a, a few things to start clicking in place, right? They need the level 6 to be used on Shad. He's almost level 7 at this point, but like you want that rotation of the bottom lane with a big dive, but in order to do that, they won't roar. So Toby just needs to catch up XP-wise. Like He's level 4 when it, the Grim is level 5. But I think you want to just whittle them down in here and rotate the Bloodseeker and try and take this tower. Unfortunately for them, though, ATW has hit level 6, so he is holding the ulti. And even with all your summons, it's still spooky. Yep. Oh, yeah. Already has the Helm of the Dominator on the Luna, too, so... <laughs> they are not opposed to fighting and getting the benefit out of the double aura. Zayas just stole that in his face. He just arrowed that big Zed door. There is some pressure on ILTW here. Four heroes from Viking in the bottom lane. He'll take a defensive position in the trees. Aramis comes in. Shad to follow up. This Luna is done for. Right. Easy dive. That's exactly what we wanted, right? Just don't oh, yeah. You cannot lose a hero for this. This should have been free. Well, Rezo's coming in. They're probably going to get at least one, but oh, maybe Viking can get a few more. Zayats, he's ruptured up, brought down by Shad. Good Two plays. For Great TP out. And now Aramis trying to fly off the map. He'll be partially successful and gets himself deep in the corner, but no TP. He's got dive in four, so should be fine. Yep, okay, he'll be cool. That was perfect. That's exactly what we were calling for, right? It's all about that first rotation from the Bloodseeker coming down, securing this area. Doesn't get the tower, but you have forced out the Luna. LTW is going to make the rotation top. Now, that swings the net worth a little bit now. The Bloodseeker way ahead of the Luna. See what really no one just threw, though? Like, he circled down here, and I wonder, Maybe he's worried that they're potentially in here, because he wants to go farm these neutrals and take these ancients. Like, he doesn't want to secede control of all this to the enemy team. Dyer's top tower secede seed top. control. <laughs> 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 the raging jungle is seceding. <laughs> they're not independent.
They're their own nation. Doing it Texas style. I mean, we'll steal Here this we... outpost up top. Oh, but maybe the invasion. Okay. Oh, no, that's just going to level it out one to one. Yeah. Okay. Fire held bottom. GA couldn't make the play, so those will go even. And runes will also be even to a piece. Uh, they have Soulbind up here. Still no roar, though, and they're just running the units under the tower. It's again the helm on the Luna early on. They need help here if they're going to fight this. Uh, <laughs> Toby's just getting pushed back. But he's completely blocked in. He doesn't have the Quelling Blade. He's going to try to cut himself to have axes. But <laughs> he's, just, he's the saddest beast master in the world. Bayez has to use a second leap to finish him off, but they do get the kill. If only there was some way. <laughs> only I were a tree cutter. Oh, wait. To be fair, he is level five. Uh, but, yeah, I uh, mean, you, you don't necessarily want it. It's just, you know, it's funny because yeah. they're a hero. Solari, we'll get, get ran down. Two more down, VP. You know, he's not the Axe Master, so you can't really blame him. You Truth. gotta get the beasts. Truth. Preach it, brother. I preach. Give me that tax-free status. A little tower trade. And you asked about the Halberd, but, well, Shad's here to help you out. He's gonna go drum Halberd on this Bloodseeker. See, that's why I asked, because that doesn't feel very good, does it? <laughs> Uh, I'm not as scared of this Bloodseeker as I, I was. But to be fair, it is also a very good defensive tool for himself. Even if he's like pop the active or whatever, like you look at this damage on the Pro, and a lot of it is right click. So that's going to be great a big stats. help. And uh, I don't know, status resistance is good. Dope egg. What happened there? Uh, I think Aramis might have pressed R by accident. Because I don't think there was anybody nearby, really. Like, odd. Either way, uh, that stinks yeah, because I they're can. in Roche, and you probably could have used that around the pit, maybe. Deso on TA, so not an easy contest. VP, they get it. Yeah, I'm looking at the log. I think he literally just hit R. And now Toby is uh, uh -oh. just dead. Dude, that's, that's such a scary moment when you see that sprout from the prophet, like on top of where you're running, and you know you are about to get destroyed, <laughs> and you can't stop it. You can't run fast enough to get away from it. It's just the Radiant impending doom slowly sprouting in front of you. That's some creepy shit. That gets in your head. Well, a uh, Roshan activated TA lineup is the scariest kind of TA lineup. You know, you try and steal this away from the hero to, to hurt her mid game. But uh, taking it so early. So I mean, I love the medallion too from Zayats, by the way. Like that—that's full commitment. Not the best item on Moran in a lot of ways, but uh, I mean, it's fine. It's just you know she'd rather have other stuff. But that's, that's a team item right there. That's what that is. It is. I think on support Morana, it makes some sense. Yeah, it's fine. It gives you like the mana regen and stuff. It's just, uh, you know, you're greedy. You want like Yules or something, a more independent based item. Yeah. All right, so you here comes the smoke. Uh, the egg is almost back. All right, so Aramis just dug up a creep and broke his own smoke. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Under the ward. Well, Aramis uh, is getting a couple of flubs. ILTW is still going to get caught, so it's not going to matter too much. Assuming they get this kill, and they will. A little bit close. Interesting. It all worked out. It was all it, part it of did. the plan. It's a uh, small stroke of luck for Viking. They'll take it, though. No That's one just walks kill. in Aramis and two shots. Oh, of, oh but wait. It took three. He, it's three shots. Hey, he gets it. Uh, ruptured right now, and he's going to move a little bit. Remember, he does have Aegis. Uh, he just destroys the brood. The spider gets swatted. The Soulbind comes down, but TA has the Aegis coming back to life. Might look to chase. under attack. Rana, no arrow, and of course TA, no blink dagger, so minimal gap closing. They do have a sprout. Toby gonna get caught, and TP home from the Bloodseeker. Or TP bottom, rather. Solari. Solari, though. Those traps. Uh oh. Uh oh. No one, no cares. Yep. He'll actually take that extra plus 39. Thank you. <laughs> this one's rough, man. This is uh, Vikings life in the tournament, and they are, are kind of getting run down. Not kind of. They're, they're getting run down.
It's yeah, yeah. It's a little depressing when you you miss like one moment for like the Roche fight. You don't get that, and then your smoke goes okay because you kill the Luna. But then the the fight after, I mean, yeah. Boom just got eviscerated. It did not look like he had 15 armor versus this uh, Deso and Bloodlusted TA. It didn't really look like he spent 15 minutes farming. Before, <laughs> going into that fight, he was 0, 0, and 0 with like 120 CS. I mean, prior to Roche, no one was not that far ahead. He was like 1,000 gold ahead. Yeah. Now he's like 2,300 ahead. Uh, it's unfortunate the Brood couldn't pressure. Now up top, Rezo will be initiated on Primal Roar, but Zayat hits an arrow. Solari's in big trouble. TP out from Rezo. He makes it, and they actually kill the Grimstroke. Now by uh, Zayat's, though, going to be brought down by a rupture. Tries the leap, but to no avail. 12-6, to 6, still pretty darn good for VP, given that that was a Primal Roar gank attempt that yeah. started on their profit. Uh, that's pretty shocking. Yeah. I actually stopped looking because I just thought he was dead. <laughs> and then suddenly I saw the tip and I wait, what? Blessings. I mean, I feel like every game we're kind of surprised at how tanky the Prophet seems. Often because he's buying mech. Well, this game yeah. he's gone for a very beefy build, um, drum into blade mail. Oh, uh, remember the triple no blade mail? Good times. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, by good times, I mean pretty awful build times, but still. But Six Bracer, Marana, you know, whatever you want. Yeah. But he is, uh, he's built for this right now. And bottom line, look at that, dude. They go into the blood right. What are the arrow that Must have been a creep. I thought I he was so. dead for sure. I was about to remark, like, now that's some, some style points. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> I think my game lagged. <laughs> Mine did too. Observer, I hope you saw those spiders pop, bud, because that was a real treat. That was a gift to the Templar Assassin, just an offering. A sacrifice. Oh, Boom is so I, I sad actually, right now. Don't even want to hit the combat log. I was, yeah, it broke the combat log actually. It won't even load. My game totally hiccuped. It looked exactly like when Monkey King's ult was first revealed. Yeah. The calculating, calculating, <laughs> gold. <laughs> Radiance Middle Tower. The AI the is not fast enough. Well, no one is very much... Are we smoking with spells here? Yeah, we're smoking with spells here. Yeah. He's in a very commanding position. He has the BKB now. And I still need to buy the recipe. Oh, but he's not got the, the Marana. Not Zayat's TP out. Nope. Ink swell. I worry that Altw is just farming the whole time. Uh, he's, he is the lowest of his cores. Just... Yep. Oh, Solari. Yeah, we've been remarking about how often the kills haven't quite felt worth it, but no one's killed so many spiders and so many creeps along the way that you, you can't really blame this Luna. <laughs> I don't think ILCW has done anything wrong. The TA is just stupidly far ahead for 18 minutes. I have 342 lasses. I don't know how many of those are spiders, but I, I reckon it's a good deal. Yeah. Well, do we need to see at the end? I don't think so. I, mm, I'm not sure. That would be great. Oh, Luna, she killed a couple there, bouncing some glaives. Dyer's Our uh, analyst top. says that generally Vikings play around Shad and depend on him to pop off and carry the team. <laughs> Good so, luck, buddy. Not looking great. Uh, and that's the kind of thing, like, it's not that Halberd's bad. We want them to get a Halberd, but if he's your playmaking hero, you need to buy items to let you make plays. And they're struggling on that front arrow down bottom. We'll be off the mark. TP out from Toby. Not going to happen. And Shad chased down into the tree line. No route for escape. Doesn't have a TP right Oh, that right one now. range creep. <laughs> oh, dude. That one's so good. The right. deny side blade splash. This guy, he's styling this game. That one range creep giving vision. That's so frustrating. I guess he probably would have had a sprout anyway, but still. Yep. Oh, jeez. Picked apart. Well. Welp, welp, welp. Furtis Pro are not messing around today. Gets uh, the courier. Okay. Arrow. Fishing expedition. More of a harpoon. Yeah, that's true. For that is the whale of the dire. 9,000 gold. <laughs>
Almost into the Aghanims. Unfortunately, it's not the Aghanims that's going to change this. It's still very good. It's the item after. Look at all this sweet blubber. <laughs> yeah, I, the Ags is really good. It's super core on this here. You need it. You definitely can't flame the build, but it does not feel like that'll be a game changer that'll really affect the state of affairs here. No one pings out the Hawk just to tell the team where it is and does not want to mess with Sunray. And in comes Boom. And Oh, 20 minutes. They don't get the outpost on Dire, so they lose out on XP. They are going to try to take a fight, though, and they grab Solo. Now, which would have been more experienced? Let's do some mathematics. Uh, almost certainly it's got to be the, uh, the outpost, so, right? Three, three heroes got 180 <laughs> XP. It's so 350 each. total. The outpost is 350 each. Yeah, that was a classic Solo play. Guys, don't worry. I'm going to distract him. No, it's uh, unfortunate that they can't even get to the outpost. Like, the sector of the map that the whole side of Vikings have to farm is like this little something like that. And as you can see, oh, Solo God. drawing on the map. They'll get Solari again. It's just two but shots. he says, guys, they're in here. Let's go find them and let's kill them. I, it's just like, it's such an efficient way to farm. <laughs> I just click them twice and get 260 gold. <laughs> He's almost level I mean, this 20. Is, this is what TA is good at, man. Snowballing in a lane, taking over. She's still deathless. It's... Can't say I'm too surprised. Beastmaster. All right, he'll be okay. And look at that. Rezo says, rupture me, I'll blade mail you, and then TP out. Shad is so sad right now. Look, look at Solo. He just goes back in for another one. He doesn't care. <laughs> That'd be funny if he ruptured him, and then he just TPs to the fountain and blade mails and runs around in circles. <laughs> All right, time to, time to Roche. <laughs> I think this would have been different if the brood went for the eggs first, because like he didn't really get to fight with the defusal. No, I think it, I don't know. I think you have to build the defusal first. They all do this build, so I I just will give the credit yeah. to the brood players. All right, I'm sure you. they know. BKB, no one. Hey, this egg's right. gonna get off. He went a little hard. Uh, they throw the Aegis away immediately, but now the real fight begins. No one is back. Refractions out. He gets disarmed. No one, not I really mean. doing much yet. But now he's awake, and the Luna has popped her ultimate. He's doing a fair amount to the back line. The Eclipse brings him down low, and now Rezo will finish off Aramis. Shad gets killed by ILTW, and now Toby gets chased down. Solari going to be fourth up, and it will be a massacre. That was four for nil. The strangest Aegis kill I've ever seen in my entire casting career. Because they killed that TA, and they all knew they were going to die. But they just said, I don't think we can get away, guys. <laughs> and they just kind of accepted their fate. I, I don't know. I at least would try to Delta Split or something. Because you know there's no way you're winning the fight after that Aegis goes. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at this Luna. She's got a cheese. You know she has a level 2 ultimate. Like, VP are just done. They say, this was fun. We were we had fun in the group stage. It's time to roll through the lower bracket. Sorry, Viking. It's been fun. And uh, they're going to put this Luna TA to work and finish off the throne. Skip into barracks completely. The Brood comes in, gets killed in about two seconds. And now the rest of Viking try to make the fight happen. They rupture TA, and she says, cool, I'm next to the throne, bud. So, GG. VP, absolute clinical performance. At, uh, yeah, that looked uh, pretty darn good for TA, guys. <laughs> I guess it's like, it's not 100% just on the Broodmother matchup. It's just the fact that, like, the TA in the rest of the game was just, like, there was nothing for her. Yeah. You know? Like, just, what what was her problem in this game? Anything? Well, obviously not. He didn't die. But they, they just I mean, did not no. have the heroes to contest. Nothing to deal with Refraction. Really not that much lockdown. Not that much burst damage. The Bloodseeker is not really that great at going blow for blow with TA. Even with the Grimstroke trying to enable him. Yeah, no one did 16k damage. Rezo did 14k damage. Oh my. That was a nice game. Good, good job. Very, Rezo. 